Half Past Dead is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world everything stupid and nothing matters. That's right. It starts off with Ja Rule watching the title float around the screen, which makes him realize turning down the Fast and the Furious franchise for this is the dumbest shit he's ever done. But this old man is wise and tells him there's 89 minutes of Seagal movie left. They'll break that record five or six more times. They get right to it when Seagal lives in a lighthouse or some shit and they kick the door in while he's in the middle of his favorite show. But don't worry, it's just his PO here to administer a court-ordered random lie detector test. A polygraph. They ask him about his past. Yeah, I'm Russian. Sometimes, you know, I work for the CIA, U.S. Marshals. That was easy. Now the hard part is getting him to tell the truth about anything for a baseline. I love the f*** out of cookies. Oh, thank God, if they had to spend another minute in here smelling three-day-old hot dogs and dried ketchup, they were going to f***ing vomit. Anyways, that has nothing to do with the rest of the movie, and now they're stealing flying cars. Uh, uh, bang! The they truly are the Fat and the Furious. <laughs> While that's happening, Seagal tries to help Ja Rule sound more black. Is I? I. 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 But he needs a lot of work, which is something Seagal will never do. Yeah, I, that's tough for me. So he gets out of it the Seagal way by murdering the f out of him as stupidly as possible. <laughs> But he gets up like that's just normal shit. I'm right back to work. And the old man lets him know that's one. For that bread, I cry. They're interrupted by the FBI. I'm with the FBI. Maybe you've heard of us? Yeah, I've heard of you. I'm pretty sure that was rhetorical, but she wants him to snitch. I'll cut your sweet deal. Which is definitely something you want to talk about in front of all the people he'd be snitching on. He got big balls. I don't think she does, so he comes up with something better. I don't talk to pigs without my lawyer. Nice try, but she's on another level. I'm a lawyer. You want my advice? Put the guns down. Son of a bitch, that legal advice is gonna cost like a hundred bucks. Then we get one of the shootouts of all time, where everyone involved uses the highly advanced spray and pray method. <laughs> Having no regard for where bullets go is Seagal's thing, so he reaches into his bag of tricks and blows everyone away with a run waddle into an unnecessary shoulder roll that hits the sweet spot of impossible to be him, but too embarrassing to be his body double, which keeps his fan guessing. But, oh man, just watching that gives him sympathy exertion, which causes him to collapse and die of a heart attack. If you need proof that there's no God in Seagal movies, besides the fact that there are Seagal movies, we get this. Motherfucker. And don't think we forgot about whatever that shit was. That's two. Now it's eight months later, and Seagal's in prison for this embarrassing shit. When he just happens to run into his boy. How you been, man? Who's not only there for whatever this was about. Cut your sweet deal. Witness protection, no time served but also many counts of attempted murder on FBI agents. I know five years in this little rat hole here. Which might not sound like a lot, but this is San Francisco, and that's like eight of their life sentences. I see you on the inside, man. After Seagal's failed lap band sets off the metal detector, this guard follows standard procedure by using his cattle prod for its intended purpose. But Ja Rule ain't about that farm life. While he does get his ass handed to him, he saves it with this sick burn. Kids hit harder than that. Hell yeah. 
Kids beat his ass way worse than that, like all the time. That's three, and we're not even 20 minutes in. Then this snotty bitch goes off script and tries to sneak a fact into a Seagal movie. Robert Kennedy closed Alcatraz in 1963. How do you respond to these allegations? But thanks to his quick thinking, we're misinformed again. Actually, Bobby closed it in June of 62. And she's immediately executed. But nobody's here to watch a stupid press conference. We're here to watch Seagal waddle strut like a fucking boss. Now he's living the life, enjoying his sitting time until he's interrupted. Get up. Someone wants to see you. Because this stupid old f wants to talk about his whole dying thing. Thought we could play some cards and talk about that. Look, this sh's barely gonna be in theaters, then straight to the bargain bin where you can just watch that sh directly. I'm a man with 50 minutes to live. Trust me, that's plenty of time. So while Seagal's feeding him a load of bullshit, do not work for the CIA. The prison is attacked by this lady who comes in like she's fucking Sting. Only she's wearing a lot more makeup. After she clears the way, these goobers follow right behind, and I'm pretty sure this guy's tangled up in the rope, which pisses her off because she was looking so cool, and you fucking blew it. Anyways, back to Seagal and the old man putting their clothes back on for reasons I refuse to get into. But I think God will forgive you. Now that that shit's over with, it's time to waddle back when they run into these guys who light them both the fuck up. Too bad for them, they didn't even notice one of the dead bodies was crying and Seagal was only pretending to be dead. But that's not on them because a lifeless clump of mass is the role he was born for. Now she gets crazy when they bust in on Professor X while he's connected to Cerebro. And at the same time, a fucking helicopter crashes into the prison. <laughs> then they're pretty sure there was a beanbag chair here earlier and head off to investigate. This guy manages to catch up with the beanbag, who reacts like his mom just walked in on him doing some sick shit. But they don't call him Hated Copperfield for nothing as he just fucking disappears. So he makes his best guess that Seagal's up in the air somewhere. But it turns out Seagal was on the ground the entire time. Then he shows his versatility by going from ham fist to limp wrist and knocks him the f out uh. daintily. We check back in with Ja Rule, who's playing basketball on a sideways court that has two dead bodies on it while under a helicopter that's raining down sparks. That's four. Red line for that red Seagal runs into Eyeshadow Lady and they have a standoff that Seagal's in complete control of since he can easily sissy slap away however many of the 800 rounds per minute she foolishly fires at him. 11.37. Just then, Ja Rule shows up to help Seagal by distracting Seagal. Bust a size. That one doesn't count because it's a gall's fault for never learning how to hold a gun. Push the red line for that red but luckily for Seagal, she's also a fucking idiot. And instead of just shooting him in the face, she has to do this shit. And I really don't see how that helps. Then we immediately get another standoff, but this time they crank the stupid up a notch when Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camacho, who has really let himself go, and this other guy decide this is a great fucking place to stand. You fucking idiots. After an intense back and forth in this prison made up of pure drywall, Ja Rule gets the drop on her and easily takes her out. Red 
Calm down, not yet. Why don't we put the guns down? Yeah, right, lady. Nice try. You first. You fucking idiot. That's five. Red line for that red then we find out, on top of men and children as weaknesses. Kids hit harder than that. You can also add women to that list. She embarrasses him so badly that she ends up going full Neo. The humiliation only stops after Seagal finally finds the elevator and runs in blasting Barney Fife style, which makes her laugh so hard she has to get the f*** out. Then Ja Rule shows something you never see in Seagal movies, self-awareness. We got issues. Yeah, you're both a f***ing mess. But Seagal's personality disorder is too strong for that, so we're treated to him flopping up a rope hilariously. Then we get the shocking twist that Seagal is undercover. You got a man in deep cover out there. If you're wondering what kind of secret mission involves dying and spending years in prison, then tough sh** because it's so top secret, not even the audience is allowed to know. This is heavy, Sasha. Being heavy is what he does best. I'll be in touch. No time for that anyways, because they found a prison rocket launcher just flying around and shoot it realistically. <laughs> which is crucial to the movie, so the audience knows it fucking hates them. <laughs> And it's given up even pretending to be coherent when they all arm themselves with prison machine guns. Except for them who go for handguns because being able to carry concealed is really f***ing important right now. Then, in a move that's classic Seagal, he rips off Die Hard and saves the day. Just kidding, he f***s it all up and accomplishes nothing. <laughs> now, the chase is on and they're quickly closing ground on a sprinting Seagal when they decide that this room is so massive that splitting up is the smart move. While this guy is confused on why a boiler room is now a factory, Seagal seizes the opportunity and throws him repeatedly without making a single sound, which would alert what's his name. Instead, they decide to do this the honorable way, American Gladiator style. Seagal puts the tensile strength of these chains to the test and shows the world he's still the master of the Peter Pan silly slap. But the movie's not letting us off that easy, so we get another standoff. Make your move. Only everyone but Seagal knows his gun is empty. Are you sure? Yes. It's a misfire. Oh, fuck you. This shit thankfully ends when Ja Rule saves the day by shooting the dead guy. <laughs> That's six. Red line for that red so he gets away. And Ja Rule shows us another Seagal movie no-no. Shame. But don't worry, because we get another fucking standoff. That ends when these two decide they can fly now and open fire for no reason. That level of senseless stupidity is just the rush Seagal needs to bust out his new move where he shoots two guns at the same time while laser focusing his eyes where neither are actually firing. He only manages to hit his own guy which he views as a massive success. Then, something nobody could ever see coming happens, and this very stable helicopter crashes again. <laughs> Luckily, Seagal realized what was about to happen, and they both got out safely. Get out of there, just kidding, Seagal grabs both lines just to be safe, and Ja Rule dies. It's a nice night to die. 
so they get a different helicopter and track him down. Say goodbye! Seagal has no idea who the fuck that is, but he sure as shit ain't going after her and just wanted to look him in the eye as he blows the fuck up. That should be the end, but it's a Seagal movie, so you know that can't happen without finding out what young hottie half his age he ends up banging. You better not be playing me, man. How fast can you get out of those clothes? That's seven. Red, 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 red.